Hi, my name is Babette. Welcome to Lesson 11 from Babette's Quick Start Guide to Theory for Fiddlers, Book 2. This lesson is titled, Let's Make a Chord. First, I want you to recall from Book 1 that the two most important notes in the scale, the 1 and the 5, are the building blocks for your basic chord. The basic chord has three notes in it, and the one and the five are two of those notes. Now to make a chord, we need to add one more note. That note is the third, and that is what this lesson is about. So the three notes of the chord are going to be the one, three, and five. So let's start by looking at the one chord in the key of G. And the one chord is a G chord. And so a G chord will be G is 1, B is 3, and D is 5. We're going to play those together, so it's time to pause this and get your instrument. And we're going to play this G chord three different ways. The first way, we're going to start on the G string, on the open G string. We're going to play open G, then B, and then open D. That's the first way to play a G chord. The second way, we're going to start on the G on the D string. We're going to play the G, then B on the A string, and then D on the A string. For the third way, we now play the G on the E string, B on the E string, and then leap out of first position to play D on the E string. Now, did you notice that this basic chord is made up of two thirds, G to B, and B to D? So we need to look at the half steps in each of those thirds. You can refer back to the previous lesson. From G to B, there are four half steps. From B to D, there are three half steps. So from one to three, we know that's a major third. And from three to five, we know that's a minor third. And when we look at a chord, if one to three is a major third, then that chord is a major chord. Also, if you recall from the previous lesson, there are three thirds which are potentials for major chords the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Now let's look at a different chord in the key of G. We're going to look at the two chord or the A chord. And even though the A chord is the two chord in the key of G, numbering within the chord is still one, three, and five. So in this key, A is one, C is three, and E is 5. Now let's take a look at the two thirds in that chord. A to C has three half steps. C to E has four half steps. So when the 1 to 3, in this case A to C, has three half steps or a minor third, that means the chord is a minor chord. Musicians who play piano and stringed instruments like the guitar and mandolin play chords all of the time because it's easier to play three or more notes together. Fiddlers want to play chords too, so we normally just play two of those notes or we play broken chords, which means that we don't play the chord all at once but over a period of time, such as a couple of beats. And here's an example of a chord 
and then the cord that's broken into pieces making it a broken cord. So this is showing you a G chord on the left and a broken G chord on the right and both contain the same notes G, B, and D. On the left the notes are played all together. On the right they are played individually. What you see here is a chart of chords in a major key. And this is showing the chord number, the intervals between the 1 and the 3, and the 3 and the 5, and then what the chord type is. For example, chord number 1, which we just discussed as the D chord, you can see that there's a, it's a major interval between 1 and 3, a minor interval between 3 and 5, and therefore the chord is a major chord. And if you look down the list of the chord types, you see that 1, 4, and 5 are the major chords, which should be easy to remember since we had 1, 4, and 5 chords in book 1. In the major and minor chords in a major key, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the interval between 1 and 5 is a perfect fifth. But in the seventh chord, it is not a perfect fifth because the fifth is flat or lowered and it is called diminished. You will notice that the seven chord is constructed of two minor thirds, whereas all of the other chords are constructed of major and minor thirds. Now let's take a look at the worksheet for Let's Make a Chord. Question 1. How many notes make up a basic chord? The answer is 3. Question 2. How are they numbered? They are numbered 1, 3, and 5. Question three, what are the two types of chords we've learned? We've learned major chords and minor chords. Question four, if you have a major chord, what kind of a third is the one to three interval? It is a major third. What kind of a third is the 3 to 5 interval? It is a minor third. Question 5. If you have a minor chord, what kind of a third is the 1 to 3 interval? That would be a minor third. What kind of a third is the 3 to 5 interval? That would be a major third. Question 6. What chords in a major scale are major chords? Those major chords are 1, 4, and 5. Question 7. What chords in a major scale are minor chords? Those chords are 2, 3, and 6. Question 8. If you are playing an A chord in the key of G, what number chord is it? It is the 2 chord. What are the numbers of the notes in the A chord? 1, 3, and 5. Is it a major or minor chord? It is a minor chord. Question 9. How is a broken chord different? It is different in that you don't play the notes all at the same time, but you play them individually. Question 10. Which number chord in a major scale does not contain a perfect fifth? That would be the 7 chord. 
question 11. Since the diminished chord is not a perfect fifth, can you play the first note of the chord and then move your finger straight across to the next highest string and play that note correctly? Try it. Okay, I've chosen to try it in the key of G, which means the seven note is an F sharp. And if I play straight across for a perfect fifth, I get a C sharp. But is there a C sharp in the key of G? No, there isn't. There's only one sharp in the key of G, which is F sharp. So in question 12, it's saying, refer to question 11 above, how do you play the fifth in the chord? Well, then you have to lower that C sharp to a C. And therefore, you cannot play it straight across. Well, thank you for listening and watching about making a chord. I'm anxious to get started on the next lesson, so we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.